This is Comic Storian's Complete Story Series, the only way to epically recap your favorite plot lines in comic books. We added voices, music, and sound effects, allowing you to know what happened in your favorite books. Now, in our last video, Jessica Cruz fought against her greatest enemy, her own anxiety. With the help of Simon, Jessica learned that even though she has to struggle each day to just get out of bed, she has someone there willing to help. And one morning, after helping out the Justice League, Simon stops by to make pancakes, but while they're eating, they received a call from Batman asking for their assistance. But our story actually begins in Gotham City's Diamond district as a man swings a bat screaming to another man that in order to protect him he must kill him just as the man chases after his friend the room begins to shake as bruce wayne comes crashing in the scared friend asks if it's the police and the panicked man says no it's him it's the batman the panicked man turns to bruce shouting for him to get away and he swings down at him but as the two of them struggle a green light begins to fill the room and jessica and simon baz fly through bruce turns back and tells the lanterns welcome to gotham simon charges through pushing the panicked man back and then he turns his swings at Jessica, but as he pushes her back, he screams that he has to kill the bat, and he runs towards Bruce. Simon grabs the man with his ring and says that it looks like they've arrived just in time to save him, and Bruce corrects him, saying, save the man, and you're late. Once Jim and the police arrive, Bruce explains that they currently have an ongoing situation that he would like the lanterns to look into. Jim follows up with, there have been a wave of crimes popping up that we can't account for. They're fear-based crimes, normal people suddenly seized by terror and driven to violent acts. First, it was three people at a time. Now it's as many as a dozen, each time all at a random location. They can't find any sort of connection between the crimes except for... And Bruce finishes stating they were afraid of Batman. Simon laughs. <laughs> it all makes sense. A man jumping through the skylights wearing a cape? It's no mystery. It's the Scarecrow. But Bruce tells him it's highly unlikely. The Scarecrow uses mediums of all sorts, like liquid gas germs, but these cases are all just random. Nothing lead back to him. That and the Scarecrow can't be in 12 places at once. This actually seems to be the work of the Sinestro. Core. Jessica says that she's pretty sure it's not them. Their rings would have given them some sort of indication that the Sinistral Core was nearby. And Simon shouts, if it was them, then we would see a giant tentacle slime monster and a burning planet in the sky. This is the work of the Scarecrow. Case closed. Bruce stares at him and tells him, remember, I'm the detective around here. Jim looks down at Simon's leg and says, forget that. Why does a Green Lantern have a gun? Simon defensively yells, that's my backup. And Jim tells him, not unless you have an open carry license that was issued from Gotham. Simon goes on to defend it, telling Telling him that the gun may save him, and Bruce tells him, I seriously doubt that. You have power rings. You don't need guns. But Simon continues telling him that everyone needs a plan B. This gun is like he is Robin. Bruce stares at Simon, telling him that the gun is going to either hurt him or kill someone else in my city. And Simon responds, telling him, Exactly. It's going to hurt the bad guys. Maybe after this, you'll be thanking me for having it. The two begin to argue back and forth, and Jim tries to stop them. But Simon continues telling him, The rings can fail. And they have. What about you? You have a jet plane, a car that shoots fire along with a bunch of scary devices in your belt. How is my gun a problem? Bruce closes his eyes, thinking back to his parents, and then he says, I won't be asking again. While you're in Gotham, you will listen to me, so this is your last chance. The two continue to argue, and Jessica quietly connects the panicked person's laptop and begins to see videos of Batman and how he's threatening the city. Simon asks, what is she looking at? And Jessica tells him that there are videos that have become popular because they all state how Batman is bad. She's seen a bunch of them. Bruce stares at her, and she rephrases that she's heard of them on a blog. Don't worry, she still thinks that he's cool. Just then, the ring alerts him that there are disturbances is detected in the emotional spectrum. It goes on stating that the classification is yellow light and its source is coming from that computer. Bruce looks at the laptop and says that this video may actually prove useful and Simon asks, how did Batman know that it was the Sinestro Corps? Over in the Batcave, Batman begins watching some of the videos and he realizes that they all are just ridiculous. Batman is half animal? Jessica says, well, they do have a point. He sulks around in the shadows. Maybe if he didn't scare people. But as the videos play, Alfred watches and then he bashes a cup of tea that he was pouring across cross Simon's head. Before Simon has a chance to react, Alfred punches him to the ground and picks up his gun. He presses the gun to Simon's head and he tells him, if I so much as see a ring glitter, don't you try and stop me, I have to kill the bat! Meanwhile, over at an abandoned office building, several people sit in front of computers all watching bad Batman videos. And a voice says, in the blackest day, in the brightest night, beware your fears made into light! And that's when we see it is the Scarecrow and the Sinestro Corps. Back in the Batcave, Jessica shouts that it must have been the video 
video feed and Bruce runs over to grab Alfred. He then recites, Be thine own palace or the world's thy jail. And Alfred stops fighting. Jessica wraps Alfred up and asks what the heck was that? And Bruce says that it's a poem. Precautionary, post-hypnotic trigger phrase to break him free of whatever's going on. He then turns to see the gun on the ground and Simon scratches his head while he grabs it. While Jessica attends to Alfred, Bruce gets back to work trying to figure out the source of the videos. Through the search, he does manage to find that the spiked videos went through a fake proxy address. And if you lay them over a map, they all come to one place. The group heads out to find an abandoned office building and Bruce and Jessica scope it out. While Simon says that he's sorry about before with Alfred and the gun. He was wrong. Bruce looks at him and doesn't say a word and Simon then shouts, Fine! I carry a gun because I'm afraid. Afraid the ring isn't good enough or strong enough? What? Don't you ever get afraid? But as Bruce continues not to answer, Simon tells him, Whatever! Not like I care. And then Bruce stops him telling him, It's not that you feel that the ring isn't good enough. It's that you feel that you're not good enough. But you will never know if you don't bet on yourself. However, before Simon even has a chance to respond, Jessica's ring shouts a warning in Spanish. She tells it in Spanish to speak English and the ring indicates fear levels are spiking. Immediate action required. Bruce tells them, it's time. And within seconds, Simon bursts through the walls with a bulldozer construct. And Bruce then says, that was much easier with the power ring. As they land, everyone sees the people tied to the chair sitting in cubicles and they all begin to scream, the brat is here! Jessica's ring begins to state that there's a code yellow, which detects fear energy, but it cannot detect a ring. Scarecrow jumps out laughing, cranking the dial on a machine that he used a yellow ring to make. While the yellow spectrum stuns Simon and Jessica, Scarecrow jumps down towards Bruce, wielding his scythe. The fear begins to overwhelm Simon as he watches everything that he was afraid of flashing before his eyes. And as he tries to crawl towards the fear computer, his ring tells him that he has insufficient willpower. With no other choice, Simon pulls out his gun, and Bruce shouts for him to use the ring, not the gun! But instead, Simon kneels up and takes aim. He tells himself that he cannot listen to fear. He can overcome fear. He is a Green Lantern! Suddenly, a giant mechanical construct drops from the fear computer and destroys it. Scarecrow screams, no! And Jessica quickly wraps him up while he's distracted. Simon picks up his gun while Bruce unties the rest of the hostages. And one of the women asks if he's here to hurt them, but Bruce tells them, no, I'm here to help you, and I always will be. As the police arrive, they begin to take Scarecrow away, and Jim tells the Lanterns that he would like to officially thank them for their help in Gotham. But now, can they get the hell out of his city with those weird rings? Things begin to wrap up, and Bruce tells Simon about what he said earlier. It's not about using fear as a weapon, and he knows what it's like to be afraid. Afraid that the city would slip through his fingers bit by bit, but that's why he uses his resources, abilities, and dedication to protect those who are most vulnerable. Simon listens and thinks on Bruce's words, and then he takes out his gun. He holds it out, saying that maybe it's time for him to give it up. He's a Green Lantern. His strength is his willpower. Bruce stares at him for a moment and tells him, I accept your apology, but I don't want that thing. Jim grabs it, telling him that he'll just take it. Bruce then walks away and he calls Simon over in private and he tells him, What you did back there took guts. Normally I don't like Green Lanterns. How was a glory hound and guy? He's an idiot, but you, I can work with. Simon laughs, telling him that he's going to take it as a compliment, and Bruce goes on stating, That doesn't mean that you can relax. I've waited a long time for a Green Lantern that I can work with, and you're it. One day I'm going to call, and you're going to answer. Simon stumbles over his words, saying that he's not sure if he should be honored or terrified. But as he goes on, he notices that Bruce has already left. And just as he does, Jessica receives a call from Raimi, telling her that he needs them back immediately. There's a mission of utmost importance. And the stories of the Green Lantern, Simon and Jessica, will continue next time right here at Comic Storian. So you might want to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to keep up to date as to what's happening with this channel. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time right here.